Good evening, Penny Pitcher Farm. Welcome back, guys. We're switching paddocks this evening. A great, wonderful evening in eastern Kentucky today. And hey, we got a little league team out of Laurel County that is tearing it up, guys. And they're playing right now, I think. So good luck to them boys. If they win this championship game, they're going to get to represent, I think it's the Southeast Division in the Little League World Series. That's big time. So kudos to them. Kudos to these gals right here. Look at this. Let me back up. Son, they're feeling good. Getting in on this right here. Gosh, I love that colored up heifer right there. That's her mommy. You tell me she didn't make make a carbon copy image but guys these cows are doing backflips look at that little man right there that's his mommy right here he is doing good little bull calf i think yeah man guys look at what these cows is going into i mean that right there is about a probably eight nine hundred pound cow 800 pound heifer and they're in grass rubbing up against their bellies but we've got we're turning in on a paddock the last time we was here uh was when we was strip grazing if you guys follow close enough and remember that video that we was strip grazing there in the the end of may uh that was when the grass was lowered it was over belt buckle high and it was it was a sight and we was trying to just test the strip grazing and i just tell you i don't know if it was the strip grazing or we got we had about a 60 day recovery period on this paddock but guys there is grass going in here like crazy turn it around june all right keep it turning there it is. they some it's it's averaging about 19 inches i mean and it's everywhere Placing guys look out through there you can see our, our line up there a little bit but look out through there at the grass and it's it's everything i mean there's just barely a little bit of weed if we had some sheep greg judy says they would nail that <laughs> but that i mean clover a sight right there's a big bunch of clover we're actually getting into a little bit tall inches. 26 inches we're getting to a little bit taller grass like I said, guys, this is where we strip grazed at there that last time, and I don't know if it was that, or like we said, the 60-day recovery period. That right there is a big part of it. But look at this right here, guys. This grass is just laid over. Tall. I mean, it's where we, the good Lord's blessed us. We bush hogged right before the drought. And I say drought loosely because the people in Texas is... They know what a drought really is, but we went for a couple months there and didn't get much rain at all um, after we bush hogged. But here in the last couple of weeks, we've got a lot of rain. I'll and, tell you something that I've learned about this with the animal impact. If normally, if you're just going to cut this for hay, you know, you're going to use a pasture and then you're going to cut it for hay, and you'll be a running tractor equipment over this. Uh, several times you got mowing machine equipment you'd be a tra traveling over it that's packing the ground down then you'd be a raking it then you'd be a rolling it then you'd have to haul it in that's constant impact with a tractor a heavy tractor with big mud tires and with these with these animals right here whenever they come in here their feed is designed where they kind of dig down in that turf break it up to where the where the grass or the rain will soak in that's right. And penetrate. We got aerators. How many how many how many mama cows? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We got yeah, I got eleven, I think. Eleven mama cows. That's twenty two. No, that's what's eleven times four? 44. That's forty four. We got forty four <laughs> aerators going out here, guys. I mean that's you hear people aerating golf courses, the greens and stuff like that. And what that does is just gives the soil room to breathe. Gives gets down into that seed bank and stirs all that up. And what I'm afraid is, whenever we start looking in places where, where we're flood prone, that's for places where we're using heavy equipment and we're constantly taking uh, an environmental impact instead of, a, of the animal impact. We're environmentally impacting the ground, causing it to pack, and you got the runoff with the rain that's causing flooding. Hey, you you may be getting on a on a 
big time subject right there because that is that is a whole lot of truth in what that statement he just made you go to you especially here in eastern kentucky man the we've had some awful flooding and it's it's evident to see and it's done a little bit of rain in here this morning i mean you can't tell it now it's bluebird skies but what little bit of rain we had this morning i was noticing coming over here a couple farms that there was water running across the road coming out of pasture fields guys that's not that's not good that's not good that means your pasture fields has not got the plant life has not got the soil life to soak up that water there's no so it's just running off like he said runoff that's what runoff is it don't there's nothing there to absorb it so it's running off and going to your neighbors and when we was coming over here i mean there's a little, there's a little road that goes between here and the trees there if we was to walk that i would be willing to bet there is nothing leaking out of this. i mean look at this paddock how could water how could water escape this right here guys i mean look what we're standing in i mean it's up to her kneecaps you can't find bare soil can you Junior? no no bare soil at all i mean if you really tried if you really tried look see all that brown right there that brown is the same if not more uh influential than fertilizer when it comes to regrowth and that ground that ground is cold like it's probably 80 degrees out here right now and that dirt you th i can finally get some bare dirt if you dig back all the carbon that's cold it's cool that's what this grass is doing it's shielding the earth if i've heard several people say and greg judy's one of them the earth will put a band-aid on itself if it's got bare soil showing and you think about it real hard if you've got bare soil on your land what's coming back a weed a weed is coming back that's the world's way of putting a band-aid on it but if you take care of it there ain't no band-aids gonna come back it's all gonna be good grazable forage and i tell you what i mean besides your occasional you know milkweed that you can see right there this old paddock right here is firing and these cows once they've got in it i mean these cows has been we should have showed you what these cows come off of it wasn't much different looking than what we're standing in and soon they've hit it they ain't went 10 foot and they started grazing they're a liking this and they the, was ready to move <laughs> yeah the majority of the time i mean when that happens that means that they're hungry that they're limited but guys i can i can assure you these cows was not limited on this last paddock they've been in um, like I said, we drove through some grass that looked like this that they was like that that they were standing in. But that's that goes back to rest and recovery. This paddock right here has had nothing but rain and sunshine on it, but 60 days. Those cows, the paddock they've been in, they've been there for five, six, maybe even seven days, and they've covered it all. And when a cow walks, they're pooping and they're peeing and they're slobbering. They're fouling, they're fouling the ground. So we don't want to. We don't want to walk in our dinner plate, right? And that's exactly what they do. They're walking in their dinner plate. So they're just, they was ready to get out and go to greener pastures. And I just tell you, this this right here, I'm excited to see what this is going to do in the fall, guys. Like I said, we're going to do a flash graze of this side of the farm and try to get to September. Uh, this is the 11th of August. 11th of August. So we'll probably move them 16th, 17th off of this paddock into the, the the valley here we'll call it the valley paddock for f five or six days that'll get us up to about the 21st or second and then we'll move them up on top of the hill for a couple days to get us on into september and then our plan is is to not come back down in this area at all until we have to this is going to be our winter stockpile we're, go we're still going to gr rotational graze on the on the front 30 acres but we're going to we're not going to eat it into the earth when i say come back when we have to we're talking about leaving a four five six inch residual over there we're not talking about leaving leaving dirt flying when it gets it eat, eat down on the whole on the whole half of the farm over there to about four or five inches we're coming over here guys if we let them cows eat it down into the bare dirt uh going in say that happens in december when you know when grass is not growing it starts snowing there's no regrowth uh happening 
if we let the cows just eat everything into the absolute earth, next spring we're going to be hurting because it's not going to grow back fast. Instead of having regrowth starting in March, being able to have grass to graze, it'll be up into April. And guys, that's a big that's a big time thing for a grazer because, I mean, we're planning on, we've got six rows of hay, and I just tell you, I'm, I'm not planning on buying, but maybe five or six more unless we add more animals. I think 12 or 15 rows of hay will get this group right here through the entire winter if we can stockpile this forage the way we're thinking that we can. And if the good Lord keeps sending us the rain, I mean, there ain't no reason why with good grazing management. But guys, these cows is tearing it up right now. It's, it's music to our ears. I mean, if we can get amongst them and just be quiet, which is a hard thing for me to do, you can you can just hear these cows rip, 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 and mouthfuls. I wish you guys could send that cow look up. <laughs> Pretty awesome, guys. This pond, we didn't do a limited access on this side of the pond just because it's it's hard. It's not, it's perfectly round just about it all the way around this side of the pond. So it's, we didn't do it. We could do it. It would take extra work, but it's, I'll just tell it like it is. It's pure, pure laziness. That's why we're not doing a limited access water point on this side. But, there's so much forage around the banks of this side of the pond that and they're not going to be here like i say but a week so they can't do much damage with this now if we have 500 head in here yeah we we would be kicking ourselves in about a week for not limiting uh, the access but they'll get in there and drink from a bunch of different spots and chomp all that down and eat it and not do nothing but help everything i tell you what guys i'm a fan of that little dude right there I am a fan. That dude right there, that's about the smallest calf I believe I have ever seen. That's his mommy right there to the left of him. But that's about what you want, guys. That's a small cow. A small cow needs to have a small calf. But I've said it before, I'll take a small calf that's alive over a big calf that's dead any day of the week. But guys, we're enjoying the evening here at Penny Pincher Farm. Just thanking the good Lord that, that we get to experience his beautiful creation for what it really is guys if you're not rotational grazing if you're not got management practices in place on your farm you're missing out you truly are you're missing out on the financial gains but you're missing out on the the I just the spiritual gains i mean it is what it is it's it does the heart good guys to see god's creation doing its thing this is what it's designed to do and when you let it do and manage it how it's supposed to be it will reward you and we are definitely seeing that, and we're thankful for it here at Penny Pincher Farm. Guys, have a good day, good evening. Have a good weekend. Everybody take care. We're going to let the grass grow and give God all the glory. Junior says, good day.